Oh my gosh, we have a guitar vacation inception where my doppelganger is practicing as he well should be because he needs it. This video is about my practice routine. Um, I, I think it's something that uh, could could help some, some other players. Uh, just having a routine that is inserted in your day and that is uh, repeatable is huge as far as getting better at anything and guitar and being a musician is definitely no exception and uh, the way I've approached my routine is I really have uh, sp some specific areas that I try to tackle each time I do the routine. Uh, and this part is just the warm up. And what I'm doing here is A, just trying to uh, get my fingers loosened up. I'm not doing any uh, really crinkly chords or uh, any big stretches. I want to uh, emphasize that you don't hear the metronome, but in all of this, I'm using a metronome. Uh, w without that, uh, this practice would be uh, not, not very useful at all, because really the metronome and the rhythmic structure is ma what makes all of this in the music, all of these notes or only music because of the rhythm and the timing and the tempo. So I'm really trying to uh, make sure during the warm up I'm doing some musicality and syncing in with that tempo and, and just in general getting the blood flowing in my fingers before I go into the next portion uh, which would be technique. And you know, th this is how I approach it with uh, the, the particular things I'm working on right now as far as a warm-up. But, you know, think about how you would approach a warm-up for where you are as a player and what you're working on. You know, it could be as simple as, hey, I'm putting on the metronome and I'm going to uh, switch between different cowboy chords. Or I'm putting on the metronome and I'm going to uh, practice some uh, alternate pick type riffing, you know, if you're a metal player and, and I'm doing just some, some general rhythmic uh, musical things that, that have some mus musicality application, but that are not difficult as far as physically. Um, you know, that this could be a, uh, a place where, you know, let's say you're trying to learn bar chords and you're, you know, working on, uh, just holding that one bar chord and, uh, playing it in, in different rhythms with di different accents and stuff like that, as long as that's not too physically challenging as, as far as where you are as a player uh, you want it to be hey kind of loose as far as uh what what it, it challenges you to do physically but tight as far as musicality and rhythm and that that rhythm is a uh, a thing that i hold probably as most important in all of this and I didn't record the metronome in all these uh, practice clips because nobody wants to sit and, and listen. I'm already doing boring exercises some of the time. Uh, and I have to hear click, click, click. It makes it even more monotonous. So, uh, but, but just know the metronome is being used for all this. So... We've shifted into the technique portion, which I do after uh, my warm-up. 
once I get the fingers flowing and I kind of naturally during my little warm up start to play a little faster and maybe do some more stretchy uh, type licks you know I, I kind of know hey I'm, I'm ready to move into my technique portion of my practice and what I'm doing as a first part of that is I'm playing the modes of melodic minor uh, played legato with a pattern that has a kind of cascade turnaround in it so I'm not just linearly linearly <laughs> uh, playing the, the scales it adds a, a little bit of a uh, I don't know if it's musicality, but it's it's kind of a combo breaker where um, instead of just going straight up and down a scale because I'm using the little turnarounds, it, it encourages good habits as far as if I were to play these uh, melodic minor modes and in, in learn a real tune. And because I play... Uh, a large portion of my technique involves legato and I'm working on incorporating melodic minor and its modes into my playing. Uh, that's a good, really good first pillar for me to hit in my technique portion of my practice. And again, the metronome's going, it's determining the speed I'm at. And you'll see, uh, the, the key here is I have the tempo set at a point where it's challenging. Uh, so I, I may uh, definitely will hit clams here and there, and I make myself do those modes again when that happens. Um, if it's, you want to kind of be in that sweet spot where for the, the most part, you can execute it. It's challenging, but it's challenging enough where you're going to hit a, uh, a clam here or there, and then you just make yourself do it right and, and get that experience of, of pushing through, and you kind of know you're at the, the right technique challenge level if that's happening. You don't want it to be so easy you're just blowing through it because then you're not getting much as far as uh, something that's going to push you to gain out of it. And obviously you don't want it to be so hard that it's, uh, you know, you're messing up more than you're getting it right. So uh, that that is kind of my my uh, outlook on, on where you want to be or where I want to be when I'm practicing technique. Now, that's what I'm working on, right? And, and for my playing and for what I'm trying to do, it, the technique is going to look different for each player depending on where you are in your playing and uh, what you need to work on. You need to be doing during the technique portion uh, the part of playing guitar that needs to be addressed and that that really you need to not be an obstacle. Uh, you do technique work so that technique is not an obstacle. Um, so, you know, it can be as simple as, hey, you know, I'm a beginner or my technique portion, I'm going to uh, first start off playing different cowboy chord progressions, right? Uh, G, C, D, or, um, and, and do that with a metronome. And then, so now I, I've shift, shifted into doing legato with the seven modes of the major scale. Um, I think I bumped the beats per minute up probably about 10 because I'm more uh, comfortable and have been doing those a lot longer than the modes of melodic minor, so I can do them a little bit faster, but still I've got it fast enough where I should hit uh, some some clams and walls here and there, 
And what I do, I'm just going to do that portion again and make it make it right. And I'm also still using kind of a cascade turnaround pattern, so I'm not just doing straight up and down scales. And you see on the melodic minor and on this seven modes of major scale, um, I'm doing them ascending and then I do descending. And uh, although I didn't want to put each clip to make this video way too long, um, I usually do each one of these three times up and down the neck. Uh, so I did the melodic minor, ascending and descending three times, and I'm going to do this. You're only going to see it once, but I do it three times, and then I do another pattern you'll see after that. Um, and, and again, think of where you are. Maybe you're a player that's just getting into uh, soloing, and uh, you you're, have learned the pentatonic scale. And all right, um, this is where you can set the metronome up at a speed where you can do the pentatonic scale ascending and descending, and you want to see if you can week by week edge that up a little bit where you get some speed behind it. Or maybe you're working on doing a particular uh, pentatonic. Phrasing that that is difficult, and and this is where you can you can insert that, or maybe you, hey man, I'm I'm, I'm ready to get out of the pentatonic box, and you can start with you know one mode or one scale that's different than the, the pentatonic box, and practice it. Uh, it. It may be initially one position, and maybe not a, be initially be that fast. Um, but but you would do that here in the technique portion um, so you can work on the physical part of being able to execute that you know maybe you're an alternate picker and you've already seen I've, I've gone between uh, two things melodic minor and most of the major scale uh, you could say hey I'm gonna play these scales uh, for this amount of time doing straight alternate picking because I really want to push those beats per minute up on that and then maybe on the, the second thing you do during the technique portion it's uh, sweet picking and you know you're trying to add sweet picking to your playing it may be real slow at first that's fine you put it on the beats per minute that you can execute but are challenging and um, you can add that as the, the second part of your uh, your technique practice. It's all about what you are doing and what you're trying to address, but fitting it in to the routine. As you see, uh, I've entered the, uh, the third technique pattern I'm using. I'm again using the seven modes of the major scale, and I'm doing them in a different kind of double up pattern where uh, it, it's just a, a different feel it, it allows you to put some uh, a different feel over the similar beats per minute and uh, you know it's, it's just another thing I, I do to hopefully have available um, when I'm actually improvising during a tune and again I'm doing it ascending and I'm gonna do it descending and during my normal practice I will do that same thing usually three times and any of this if uh, if I'm having one of those days that we all have where you wake up and you just ain't got it you know I may make myself do it four times uh, you know it, it all depends on uh, on the human part of, of your approach and practice with a purpose. Um, some days are different than others. Some days you, you feel really good. And, uh, you may be, that may be the day you decide, hey, I'm going to bump the 
of beeps per minute up on these exercises that I'm going to read. Hey, I've been wanting to add this ingredient. I'm going to try to start uh, adding this to my technique portion. Um, so, uh, the real takeaway is there's a technique portion. But it has rhythm, it has musicality, and it's something you're working on specifically to take that away as an obstacle in your playing. All right. Now, this is after the technique portion, and I call this, I guess, the, the harmonic advancement portion. This is when I try to do something that, um, instead of just being a, a physical training, it's a training that um, involves me really uh, being mentally engaged and pushing that part of my playing uh, along with with uh, the, the physical parts that, that go with it. So instead of just blowing through scales and modes now, I'm making myself play over changes, which for me is the perfect harmonic advancement exercise. So I kind of laid out some two five ones there i think it's either the tune or similar to a, a tune called tune up but it's, it's pretty much just um several descending two five ones and i had the metronome on and i'm making myself play through those changes and uh that that's pushing me as far as my uh, ability and intellect to do that in a musical manner and do it rhythmically and, and hopefully a way that doesn't just sound like I'm uh, playing the same patterns over and over again. So really the goal of this, the harmonic portion, is to play something that uh, addresses your uh, intellectual understanding of the instrument in respect to something you're trying to do with your playing. I put this part last because, uh, you know, really this, this routine usually takes about an hour, and a lot of that is the technique portion. But, um, I put this last because it's flexible, uh, A, in how much time you have, and B, how much mental real estate you have that day. Uh, and, you know, you can, maybe some days I can do this uh, where I'm, I'm pushing my intellectual uh, musical uh, part of my brain hard and I may be able to do it for 30 minutes some days I may get 15 minutes worth and be like man I, I'm i kind of uh, tapped out you know uh, it, it, it's at the end because of that human element where on, on some days depending on what's going on in your life or just whatever you, you woke up and, and don't have it that day you can have that adjustment but on the good day uh you know like let's let's say i was having a, a good day uh this time you know I, I did the easy tune up 251 song i'm gonna say hey i'm gonna throw in this other tune i've been working on and, and that may be uh that may be what I do on a particular day for my harmonic advancement. I may say, hey, this is a standard I think is cool, or this is a Wayne Shorter tune I like, or this is a, a modern jazz tune I heard that, that I want to add to my repertoire and ability to play over it and the form and the changes and, uh, and you know, add that on a 
on a good day. Um, really, once again, that harmonic advancement should be uh, catered to where you are and what you're trying to do uh, as a player and what you're trying to get better at and accomplish in in your music, right? So, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be a, a solo, you know, lead playing type exercise. It may be, hey, I'm a, I know my cowboy chords, but I'm starting to learn my bar chords and I want to play G in, in the first position as a cowboy chord and then G bar chord and, uh, and I want to to do that and, and again through all of these exercises you have that metronome going and you're adding the rhythmic element so it's it's all has that pillar of musicality um emphasized. Or maybe uh you know this is I'm a I'm a rock or, or metal player or something like that during my harmonic advancement this is where i'm going to try to start learning this song that has thus far been beyond my ability it's a little bit too hard for me but because of the things i'm doing in my technique practice i'm addressing all of those aspects that make it hard and because uh I'm, a, I'm addressing that, I can in my harmonic advancement uh, part of my routine start actually playing that song. And you may slow it down, slow the beats per minute down at first, you know. Uh, it, it could look like a bunch of different things, but the point is uh, the harmonic advancement portion is flexible as far as length, and it's at the end, and it is should address something that is bringing your intellectual or your but bringing your musical brain in the equation in addition to your physical musical skills um so that's that's the uh the last portion so really it's just a warm-up a technique and then a harmonic advancement and you choose uh, which things you do during each of those uh, for your own playing and for what you're working on. Um, I don't, I don't want to beat a dead horse and make that sound more complicated than it is, but I'm happy to talk in comments about uh, different, different things that, that that could look like depending on uh, what somebody else is working on. And again... This is one way to practice. This is how I've chosen to practice. I'm not saying it's the best way to practice, but what I will say is just by having a routine and it being something repeatable and uh, have specific purpose that you do every day that addresses uh, very targeted things every day on a regular basis, uh, that is how you get better. It'll be incrementally better, but that's how you get better at anything is incrementally over time. And um, since I've really started adding this to my daily routine, um, I, I really feel those incremental changes most days. Some days I pick the guitar up and I'm like, have I ever played this thing before? But for the most part, uh, if I'm... Uh, keeping up on, on my practicing, it, it, it does come out as incremental improvements when I actually play. Um, anyway, so that's, uh, that's the guitar vacation practice routine that, that can be modified or thrown out the window or, uh, reinvented or, uh, copied even if, if it helps anybody. Um, so hopefully it, it will help somebody and i think the the biggest thing is that you practice use your metronome have some musicality involved in all of it and let your practice be challenging enough to 
uh, trip you up some, but not so challenging you can't execute it. And I'll end there. So happy guitar vacation. And I hope you all get your practice in and you enjoy your guitar vacation. Holler at you later. <laughs>